Hi, this is Julian Foster. On behalf of Converge One Government Solutions, we'd like to thank you for checking out this quick overview of Zoom Form for Government's E911 compliance features with Ryan Heath from Converge One Government Solutions and Bobby Hansen from Zoom Communications. Ryan, take it away. Thank you for the introduction. I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, Converge One Government Solutions. Converge One Government Solutions is one of the first federal Zoom phone partner integrators. Uh, we have decades of telephony experience, you know, which really help us bring migrations, integrating legacy systems into the new type of platforms. So now when you're on the road, what happens if there's a 911 emergency? How do you guys deal with that? Because now you're not tied to a physical location. Zoom pump, so there's a lot of things. There's, there's, there's Carey's Law, there's Ray Bombs Act. There's lots of things that we as enterprise IT folks and, and phone voice guys need to comply with. Um, Probably the most recent one is Ray Balms Act, which says that you really need granular control of what information you send to the public's public safety answering point whenever someone dials 911. So in the IP telephony world, that's always been problematic, but um, you know, there's there's been different vendors that have popped up with different solutions. Cisco has emergency responder, and Trotto has their system, Red Sky has their system that gets used on you know, a lot of other third-party PBX platforms. When we built Zoom Phone, we built that emergency response capability intrinsic to the platform. And I can show you that in a couple of places. Number one is I'm going to go and click on Google Chrome. And this is a little bit of um, getting into the administrative side of things. But in, within the administrative portal, I'm able to go down to my company information and click on emergency services, which is, well, let me click on account settings and emergency services, this will allow me a lot of granular control of sending emergency calls to a PSAP, to an internal support team, as well as supporting uh, development of locations within my enterprise. So what that allows me to do is map my network to physical locations and addresses. So when someone is logged into my network, wherever they happen to be on campus, if they dial 911, then it will get sent out to uh, the PSAP with the proper information for the response location. That's all good. That's all well and good for people that are on campus. But as we mentioned, you know, two and a half years ago, a lot of us went home and didn't go back to the office. And we're now being asked, uh, you know, do we want to go back to the office? And we have this hybrid work environment. So what do we do for 911 when they're using Zoom phone and happen to be working from a coffee shop? or happen to be working from home. In that case, again, this is my Zoom phone desktop app. This is where I'd be spending my, my, my life whenever I need to make a phone call or, or take phone calls. On the top right here, I'm being challenged. Uh, you know, I kind of ignored it earlier, but you'll see the red dot by my phone icon. You'll also see, let me hide these floating controls again. You'll also see the red arrow and dot on the right side of my screen. This is telling me, you need to do something, guy. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and click on here. And what it's saying is that it doesn't know what network I'm attached to. And in fact, if I dial 911, it's going to use a default account um, emergency response location, which is the main account for or main address for this account, which is shown here uh, as a Huntsman address. Now, I know that's not correct. So I'm going to go and update that. And in fact, I'm going to add a new address. And I'm going to be the guy who's sitting here uh, nervously typing in front of a webinar of people. So I've simply typed in my address. Uh, it's kind of interesting because for 911, there's also this, um, this notion of uh, system of record notifications. So by clicking this box, the user is confirming that uh, others now have access to this information, including the PSAP and the account admin. I'm not going to add that address. It's going to do, do a, a geo lookup to make sure that it's the right address. So I'll go ahead and say use that address. Now you'll see in the top right that red arrow is gone. Zoom just associated my network in my home office with that physical address. Anytime I log in on Zoom phone from this network, it will not challenge me again. 
Now, if I go and take my PC to the Starbucks, it's going to ask me that same question. So we call that nomadic 911 and really follows the user around wherever they're going. And one kind of interesting thing and in capability built into Zoom phone is the ability to test that 911 location. So I'm going to go ahead and dial 933 from my phone and let's listen to the response I get back. Your number 239-291-6795 for Bobby Hansen is provision for 911. The pre-provision address used is 236 Block Loma Road, Key Largo, Florida 33037 US. All right, so we were able to handle 911 locations on campus for the nomadic mobile worker. And in fact, we give those people tool sets to confirm where their address is currently set up. Now, the last part I want to address on that is um, if I happen to be from um, dial 911 from the Zoom app on my cell phone. And in that case, uh, Zoom has realized that the, uh, the cell carriers have figured out 911 better than we ever could. And if you dial 911 from the Zoom phone application on your mobile device, we will immediately hand that call over to the native dialer within your, your iPhone or Android device and leverage the cell, uh, the, the cell carrier's capabilities for 911 for triangulation with cell towers, that type of thing. So we feel like we have a very comprehensive uh, 911 solution. And one of the keys here is built into the platform, there's no additional cost. I really appreciate your time today in the demo. I want to remind you that C1GS can help you with any of the things we discussed here today. Our contact information is below.